What's up music makers, it's Luke from Sojourner Tracks and today we're talking about automations. So if you haven't started using automations in your mixes yet, this is going to unlock some next level potential for you. So automations allow you to really dig into your effects, uh, your plugins, and a new way to balance and ensure that all of the detail that you want in your mixes is coming through. It's a really big topic and there's a lot of different things that you can do with automations. Today I'm just talking about the basics, something to get you going, get you started. And uh, if you like today's video, please give me a thumbs up. I really appreciate it. Let's get started. <laughs> So I've got a demo of mine pulled up here from around 2009. For those of you who are interested, this is actually the whole project is up on my Patreon page. My Patreons can download it and you know, you could sample it, practice mixing, remix it, put it up on your own sound clouds, what have you. Um, that is available to my Patreons only. Um, you can check that out. I'll link in the description below, but automations, where do you find them? So we need to go up here first and hit the show automations button. And this line will come up on the interface. It defaults to volume, but obviously there are many, many things that you can control through automation. And I'm just going to show you briefly how to uh, set up your automation points, and then we'll get into some of the more common uses of that. So if I drag this line up and down, you'll see over here, the fader is actually moving. So that's what we're doing. We're just controlling the fader automatically. Um, and if I click anywhere on this line, I can create points. So if I create four points there, then this, this bar in the middle, I can drag that up and down and thereby change the volume of this channel. Um, if you double click on a point, you will get rid of it. So now we've got more of a fade in and fade out slope, um, which is also a really useful, really common way to use automations. If you hit shift and control, just like uh, fades outside of the automation window, and then click and drag while holding shift and control, you can control the slope. So this is another way to just really create some nice, highly detailed fade in and fade out um, type moves with automation. Uh, you can drag over these and hit delete if you want to get rid of them. Or if you've done a lot, uh, you can right click on the track and go down here to delete all automation. And I, I say that because um, you may get ahead of yourself with automations and realize you've got to go back in the channel and change some things. You might have to start over with the automations, which is why I would suggest don't do any automations until maybe the very last thing in your mixing process. Uh, because it's the automations literally take over controls. So if you have to go back and then change those controls, the automations will just take over um, back to whatever you had them set up to be. So not something you want to be doing in the middle of your mixing process because it's actually going to cause you a lot of frustration. Do, so do this at the end of your mixing uh, process. Um, the other thing, the tool that I, I really like to use with automations is the marquee tool. So it's up here in my control click slot. So if I hit, or a command click slot. So if I hit command or hold command and uh, click and drag, I can actually grab a section of this. If I click on the line, now it's created all four points for me so that I can just have this neat uh, little section um, to control easily. That's, that's the best way that I know of to um, take control over automation points. It just makes life a whole lot easier. And we can listen to how this is affecting um, the volume. You can watch the fader over here. So obviously, a lot of great uses for that just in volume alone there are a lot of things that uh, really will help you to balance out your song to make sure that uh, what needs to be heard is heard that the balance is right that the details are uh, are in there and um, you know that you can 
actually get in and control uh, this level of detail uh, is is really great, really important stuff. Um, so other than volume, what are some common ways that you can use this? And for me, uh, another one that I use commonly is pan. So you can, you can um, control the panning of your tracks as well. Uh, if you go down here to the drop down menu and then under main, you'll find pan. You want to choose uh, absolute. So now I have a pan line and it's set to zero right now. But if I wanted to, I could grab uh, that section again. And so maybe just for that part of the song, I want them to go more to the right. Not interested in feelings. Yeah, maybe she's a little bit Can't you feel the sting of her? Obviously, I wouldn't use that in the song, but um, you can see how that would, um, you know, maybe for a chorus, you can uh, widen things out and then bring them back in for a, a verse part or something like that. So uh, automations make stuff like that possible, um, that it doesn't have to be static all the way through. Um, or I know a lot of people will just create a new track to do this kind of stuff when you can just you can use automations to do it on the same track. And uh, with that in mind, you know, you can do this with effects as well. So another use that I have for automations commonly is um, say I want flangers on these guitars. Um, and obviously I don't want a flanger on the guitar the entire time, um, but I just want it on this verse part. Uh, if you go down to this menu here, uh, you'll see down here is the flanger. These are the controls that you can um, affect with automations. So we could do a mix control and just turn the mix down to zero and up to you know whatever we want it to be uh, during a certain section. But what I'm going to do is actually, um, in this case, I'm going to go to bypass. So up here under main, you can bypass any of the plugins that are currently on the channel. So we will just have the automations bypass the guitars for most of the song. And then for this specific section that we're talking about, we will turn it on. So this is just an on off kind of thing. You have, you have two options. You can be either bypassed or not bypassed. Um, and as we listen to this, you hear it kick on. So another way I really like to use automations is to create delay throws. So a lot of times you'll hear, uh, specifically on vocals, you'll hear a single word or a phrase where this delay pops out and kind of fills in the space behind the word. Uh, it's a really cool effect, um, and that's all done with automations on uh, effects sends. So uh, in the same, uh, similar way to what we did with the flanger, um, but this we're going to be doing with uh, buses and sends. So if I come down here to the vocals and let's listen to this part here. So what if I just wanted the delay to pop out on those no's? Um, I've already got a bus set up here with a quarter note tape delay. Um, you can see the settings there. Um, but I don't want this going on through the whole song because again, it would just get all over everything. I just want it on those no's. Um, so I can come in here and go to main and then find the correct send and bus. So this is gonna go to the tape delay, absolute. And then if I use my marquee tool to just grab these two words and the spaces in between them, and then send 
a whole lot more of the effect. And we're going to take it off completely on either side. Let's hear what that sounds like. So obviously that's a little bit much, but you can adjust to taste here. Not interested in feelings. No, 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 she's not interested in feelings. You get the idea. So you can um, essentially just add a little bit of ear candy um, here and there without um, just saturating all of your tracks with uh, all these different effects, you know, you bring an effect here and there, it's going to be much more interesting for the listener um, because they're going to pick up on it as opposed to having it go throughout the song, muddy up your mix and what have you. So those are some of my favorite uses for automations. The last thing that I want to show you is um, some global automation. So if you come up here to this drop down menu, you have your global tracks and so you can actually with using the same process you can automate the tempo of your song um, so you can make uh, different tempo changes as well as uh, you can do signature changes you know if your song changes from 4-4 to 3-4 um, you probably want to get that stuff automated in here because then your um, metronome is going to follow those changes uh, there's a lot of ways that, you know, if you're doing more complex things with your song as far as, you know, and th this is stuff that you do before you record, obviously. But uh, if you have some signature changes or tempo changes, you can actually map those out um, using automations. So hopefully this was helpful for you. Like I said, it's a big topic. There's a lot to unpack with automations, and this was just scratching the surface. But hopefully it was enough to get you started, to get you thinking about creative ways to use the tools that are in Logic already to bring them to their fullest potential. I'd love to hear what you're doing with automation. I know some of the synth people out there do some crazy things, and when I look at their automations, I'm just blown away. Um, and also there are other cool aspects to it that we may cover in future videos like um, you can actually write in automation or play in automation with uh, some controllers, some MIDI controllers as well. So if you'd like to see a video like that, let me know in the comments below and we will consider that for a future video. As always, thank you so much for watching the videos and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.